I'm going to play two Irish slow airs, and I'm going to play each one twice. And in doing so, I'm going to demonstrate two very different violins. They're both Scots. Here's the first one. It's made largely of fruit wood, wood from an orchard, which presumably will be very cheap or free to the maker. It's an amateur violin, clearly an amateur violin. If you just look at it, you can see that. I'm hoping these old boxwood pegs are the original ones. There's nothing to tell you who made it, we thought, when I got it, perhaps 15 years ago. But in fact, there is. But it was damaged, and um, when it was opened, the top taken off to, mend the, to uh, do the repairs, at the bottom, down there, underneath the tailpiece, on the back, were seen neatly handwritten the words, J. Keith, February 1854, Kelso. So it was made by someone called J. Keith, about whom nothing, virtually nothing, is known, and he would be a, a local amateur fiddler, a local amateur maker, rather, maybe he was a fiddler as well, of course, and he would make violins for his own satisfaction or for the local community. Uh, that was very common throughout Scotland and England in the 19th century. Um, after all, people couldn't afford to go to, see Edinburgh and buy a professionally made violin, but they liked to have a fiddle to dance to and to listen to. And this is one such. Um, it's a nice old violin, uh, and what I'm going to do is, as I say, is I'm going to play this tune, this first tune, Paddy's Rambles Through the Park. Now, Paddy's Rambles Through the Park comes to us from John Doherty, a famous Irish fiddler who lived from 1895 to 1980. And apparently, he heard this tune from his grandmother, who claimed that it represented the sound of a banshee wailing. Paddy's Rambles Through the Park. This is what Paddy heard when he was going through the park. Here we go. So that was J. Keith's fiddle. I should have said that in the parish records for Kelso, there's a J. Keith who was a barber around about 1854, so maybe that's who it was. 
Anyway, this is the second fiddle. Now, this, the provenance of this one is well known because this is made by a professional maker. His name was John Carr. And he lived in Falkirk. This particular violin, which has a rather interesting uh, lion's head scroll. Um, anyway, this particular violin was made in 1909. John Carr uh, was a man about music, really. He ran a music shop. He made violins, about 60 he made. He restored and repaired violins. He was also an extremely good player, and, and he was, as they called him in those days, a professor. In other words, he taught people how to play. So, without further ado, Paddy's ramble through the park. Oh, by the way, just one other thing. Fruit wood for the first one. This is tone wood that's here. Um, John Carr, professional maker, bought in properly seasoned tone wood from the continent for his violins. So this violin is a much more handsome looking instrument. Don't think you can see it all that well in the video. The, the flaming, that is the grain, is not showing up too well. But nonetheless, it's, a very, it's actually a very pretty instrument. Here we go then. Paddy's ramble through the park. Version 2. <laughs> Now here's our second tune, and it's called Coming Home, and this isn't ancient at all. This was written by Pete Cooper, the fine Irish folk fiddler, and he wrote it for a TV film which was called Coming Home. So it's quite a recent tune, but it's written in the old irregular Irish slow air style. Very, very attractive, I think.
That, I'm afraid, was a slightly imperfect account of that tune. Sorry about that. But, but you get the idea. And it's a very nice tune. I should have said, of course, that this is the J. Keith file. And this is the, the old amateur one. Now we'll move on to John Carr's fiddle. So here we are with John Carr. And it's coming home. instruments made in the same country with completely different backgrounds but both lovely to play and I think nice to listen to. <laughs> 